Hello, and welcome to Electro Nerds Academy. Last time we learned how to read DC voltages with Arduino. Today, we'll test how accurate those readings are and see how to make them better. So let's dive in. We've already uploaded the sketch from our previous video to the Arduino, which you can find in the video description. Now, we'll power the Arduino using a variable power supply. The positive lead goes to the 5 volts pin and the negative lead to the GND pin. An important point to remember here is that the 5 volts pin is directly tied to the VCC pin of the AT Mega 328 chip, so never supply more than 5 volts to this pin. Next, we'll connect a precise 3.3 volt source to analog pin A0. Up to this point, you might be wondering, without the USB cable, how will we communicate with the computer? For this, we'll use a USB to serial module. This module translates USB signals into serial and back. It has five pins, RX and TX for communication, plus five volts, 3.3 volts, and GND for supplying power to external serial devices. We connect RX of the converter to TX of the Arduino Uno, TX of the converter to RX of the Uno, and GND to GND. Then we plug the module into the computer. Now to use the module, we first need to install the appropriate drivers. The link to download the drivers is in the video description. Once downloaded, just extract the files, run the installer, allow any permissions, and click Finish. After successful installation, open the Device Manager, and you'll see a new COM port listed under Ports. This is our USB to Serial module. Now back in the Arduino IDE, we open the Serial Monitor. With the supply set to 5 volts, the readings are very close to the actual voltage that is 3.3 volts. When we lower the supply voltage to 4.8 volts, the error in the ADC readings increases, even though the input is still a steady 3.3 volts. Decreasing the supply voltage even further to 4.6 volts makes the readings deviate even more. This shows that the Arduino's ADC values are affected by the supply voltage. This is because, by default, the ADC uses the supply voltage as its reference. Think of it like a ruler. Zero volts is the start, and the reference voltage, which is by default the supply voltage, ideally 5 volts, is the end. At the start, the ADC value is zero, and at the end, its value is 1023. The midpoint corresponds to about 512, which represents 2.5 volts. But if the reference voltage drops to 4.6 volts, the entire scale shifts. Now the midpoint value of 512 corresponds to only 2.3 volts, introducing errors into our measurements. Let's understand this shift using the formula we discussed in the previous video. With a supply of exactly 5 volts, an input of 2.5 volts corresponds to an ADC value of about 511.5. But if the supply drops to 4.8 volts, that same 2.5 volts, the ADC now gives around 532.8. That's quite a difference for the exact same input. To solve this issue, one thing we can do is that we can supply the Arduino with an external precise reference voltage for its ADC. For this, we will use an LM4040 based module, which actually contains two LM4040 ICs arranged to provide two precision outputs. 4.096 volts for 5 volt microcontrollers like the Arduino Uno, and 2.048 volts for 3.3 volt devices like the ESP32. At first, these values may look unusual, but in millivolts, they are 4096 and 2048. These numbers are carefully chosen because they make ADC math simple. Let's see how. Suppose we want to calculate the ADC step size using the formula we discussed in the previous video, and we are using 4096 millivolt as the reference voltage. So dividing 496 millivolts by 1024 for a 10-bit ADC gives exactly 4 millivolts per step. With 11-bit resolution, 4096 divided by 2048 equals 2 millivolts per step, and with 12-bit resolution, 4096 divided by 4096 equals 1 millivolt per step. This makes calculations neat and predictable. The module has four pins, VCC, ground, and two reference outputs of 4.096 volts and 2.048 volts. Next, we connect the LM4040 module to our Arduino. The VCC pin of the module will go to the Arduino's 5 volts pin, the ground pin to Arduino's ground, and the 4.096 volt reference output to the AREF analog reference pin of the Arduino. But don't connect AREF pin yet, since the code still uses the default reference voltage, applying an external voltage directly to the AREF pin without declaring it in the code could damage the ATmega328 chip. 
So for this, we will use the analog reference function, which allows us to select the source of the reference voltage used by the ADC. It takes a single parameter, that is the type of reference voltage used by the ADC. Valid values for this parameter are default, setting the supply voltage as the reference voltage, internal, setting the internal 1.1 volts on the AT Mega 328 as the reference voltage, internal 1V1, and internal 2V56, which are built-in references available only on the Arduino Mega, and external, which sets the voltage applied to the AREF pin as the reference voltage. So now let's update our code to work with an external voltage reference. In the setup function, we will call the analog reference function and pass external as the parameter, since we are using an external reference source. It is also good practice to discard the first few ADC readings after changing the reference because they tend to be inaccurate. To handle this, we'll run a short for loop about 10 times, calling analog read inside it each time. In the loop function, we will also update our voltage calculation, replacing 5 volts with 4.096 volts, as now the maximum value that our ADC can read is 4.096 volts. Using our ruler analogy again, 0 volts is the start of the ruler, at which the ADC output is 0, and the reference voltage, which is now 4.096, is the end of the ruler, at which the ADC output is 1,023. With these changes done, we can upload the code to the Arduino. After a successful upload, we will connect the 4.096 volt pin of the module to the AREF pin of the Arduino, and then open the serial monitor. We can see now our ADC values are pretty close to the actual 3.3 volt input voltage. Now, if we decrease the supply voltage to 4.6 volts, it will have no effect on the ADC readings as the reference voltage for the ADC is external. Now, let's lower the input voltage from 3.3 volts to around 1.22 volts, and you'll see that the ADC readings remain very close to the actual value. Increasing the voltage all the way up to 4.096 volts still gives accurate readings. But remember, with this setup, never exceed this voltage as currently this is our reference voltage and we can't measure voltages higher than the reference voltage. That's all for this video. If you found it helpful, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Be sure to check out our YouTube channel and website for more content like this, and we'll see you in the next one.